Well, it's lovely to, to see you again, Rob. How are you? And you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, good. all good. Well, last week you were only bearing up, so, that, so that's an improvement, isn't it? It's an improvement on bearing up, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's better. It's better than that, at least. I always have a friend who was more or less on his deathbed, but would always say fair to middling. Yes, that's fair enough, isn't it? Fair to middling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm better than fair to middling, I must say. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, we're good. good. Well, it's lovely to catch up with you. And uh, on Sunday, you were talking about prayer. But one of the things we also learned about you was uh, you like to dabble a little bit in sports science, don't you? And you, you, you revealed how it's possible to never hit the wall as most yeah. runners do. And yeah. what is the secret? Uh, not to run, I think, was, was what I came to, the conclusion I came to, yeah. Um, because that, that's always a high risk. Right. Um, I actually did hit, when I was a child, I did hit the wall running. Okay. Um, but it was, a, it was actually a physical wall, physical not, a, not, not a virtual wall. <laughs> um, we, it, was a, we were, it was a primary school. And, and the, we had this very restricted running space where we were to run right to the end of the playground and run back and touch the wall. Okay. And, the, and the teacher had put a series of children in front of the wall to try and stop us in case we hit the wall. Okay. Because as I came hurtling towards it, they just moved out of the way. Right. And, um, and I went smack into the wall and lost a tooth. Okay. So, um, so yes, so I've learned from that. Don't hit the wall running. <laughs> Good. Good. So we've got the rich vein of your, your sort of running career to explore. Yeah, yeah. Also on Sunday, uh, you revealed your love for 1970s style wrestling, didn't you? So yeah. I, I think if we sort of struggle with uh, prayer, we might just go to that if we're sort of uh, lost for words. Okay, but we're, we're, we're sort of keep that one in reserve. Okay, yeah, yeah. But the reason why you talked about hitting the wall was uh, you, 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 you said that you'd never done it running but there have been times perhaps when you were praying or in your prayer life that you felt you'd hit the wall. And I just wondered if you could perhaps sort of share when and where that might have happened. Yeah, I mean, I, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think as, as, as we go on in the Christian faith, that there, there are times when we feel dry and there are times when we feel that our prayer life just isn't very effective or our prayers aren't just, just not getting through. And especially if we hit times of tragedy or, or times of difficulty or any traumas in life, um, those, can, those can be very difficult times um, for us to be sustained in prayer. And you just feel sometimes as if you're, you're running out of steam right. and, and you just can't sort of you know, go on. And um, what I think is at those times especially that we need encouragement from one another. Yeah. We need support from one another. And um, because otherwise we're not going to really able, be able to persevere through, through that and, and keep going. So I think encouragement, encouragement from other believers, encouragement to one another is really fundamentally important. Yeah. Particularly on this journey. Yeah. Yeah. And has yeah. there been an occasion when, when you felt uh, you, you needed that encouragement or support? Can you think of an example in your, your Christian experience? Yeah, I think so. I think I will. I mean, interestingly enough, it happened quite early on when I became a Christian. Um, I had a sort of sudden crisis about about a year later, and I thought, you know, is this all real? Does God love me? And and, and you know, and um, and just needed a lot of people that were wiser and more experienced in the Christian journey to to sort of come alongside you and um, and above all, tell you that actually this is a normal experience. When you look at the Gospels and you see how often Jesus teaches about perseverance in prayer, yeah. clearly it is a normal thing that we struggle with prayer. Yeah. And we, we struggle in our prayer life. Um, and we need encouragement. We need one another to support us in that. Yeah. yeah. It might have been better, might it? Instead of Jesus saying, when you pray, say, if he'd said, when you struggle to pray. Well, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but he does. He gives sort of several stories about people, sort of, well, particularly perseverance in prayer. And he actually does say this, you know, to encourage you to keep praying and not give up. Yeah. So I think the Lord knows that um, prayer is actually quite difficult for us, yeah. particularly to sustain ourselves in prayer. And we do need the encouragement of others um, coming alongside. That's why I mentioned sort of Aaron and her lifting up Moses's arm, so to speak. Yeah. That's, that's often a sort of picture of intercession. Yeah. Anyway, that we need that support of others to, to keep us and help us um, on the journey. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you also 
I think you shared from Psalm 13, didn't you? Which is quite an amazing yeah. psalm, uh, where the psalmist is going on sort of how long is this going to happen? And uh, I mean, in one sense, having a bit of a moan, isn't he? Uh, yeah. But being honest before God, which is always good. Uh, and uh, I just want your reflections on that, because quite often we do ask that, those t that question, don't we? How long? Uh, how, how long is this going to go on, Lord? How long am I going to have to endure this? How long? How long? Yeah, they, they, they often is reflected in the Psalms. In fact, very often they, they sort of change tone. And if, in Psalm 13, what I think is quite interesting is it, it starts off with this kind of, the Lord, how long is this going to happen? But at the end, it comes out with these declarations, these yeah. sort of statements of belief and statements of faith, where he almost says, uh, almost sort of rallies himself and sort of says, you know, um, I, I'm going to sort of declare this, even though at times um, I, I feel really dry and I feel really sort of worn out. Um, he's going to make these declarations. So it's a beautiful psalm because it, it ends it ends so powerfully with these wonderful declarations of praise. Yeah. And I think the psalms are often a place that we can go to, can't we, when we are, fear, when we are struggling uh, in prayer or with life because they just seem to encapsulate so many of the emotions we feel, don't they? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you've got, you've got so much emotional expression through the psalms. And I, and I actually think that's... That's one of the beautiful things about it, that, that, that God knows us and he knows just how frail and weak we are in these things. And we can see that, we can find that expressed um, through the Psalms and other parts of scripture as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's really encouraging. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes that they can always be a, a, a sort of a chart that you can measure your progress against, can't you? So you might say, I'm, I'm still in the, the moany stage, but, uh, you know, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd like to reach the end of the Psalm sometime where there's a... Uh, you know, Thanksgiving, and uh, is, that, is, that, is that part of the prayer? How long, Lord, am I going to be on verse two? Yes, I've been here for a week. <laughs> yeah. Can I get to verse seven, please? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm absolutely, but I think people do find great comfort in the Psalms because there's this, this expression of weakness, this expression of, 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 of desperation sometimes through yeah. them. Um, and I think we connect with that, we, we, we find sort of uh, reassurance with that I, I think so I do anyway yeah yeah yes no it, it is really good isn't it that we've got kind of such a big collection of psalms mm. uh, different emotions uh, that we can connect into yeah and I think we just need to learn to affirm and encourage each other and and um, I mean encouragement is a really important aspect of Christian faith and Christian life we're not expected to do this alone Jesus made it really clear that um, right from the outset of his ministry, he was going to call people alongside him. Yeah. And, um, and that's really what we're about. We're in the Christian community. We, 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 we encourage one another, support each other, affirm each other. And, and, and we should be doing that all the time in our Christian faith. Yeah. Um, I've learned over the years to really appreciate encouragement. Um, partly because there've been times when I've so desperately needed it. And, and you were this desperately one's needed it. Oh boy. I remember actually I was, um, when I was, when I was younger, um, and I was, um, at school, I was the captain of the year seven cricket team. Okay. And, um, at school. What might have been? They, huh? Sorry? What might have been? What might have been? It was a legendary year. Yes. It wasn't, it was, it just was a legendary year due to the fact that we managed to lose every single game. I mean, not just most games. We lost every single game it was absolutely horrendous i, I, and, don't, blame um, the captain. I, I don't blame the captain <laughs> what could i do i just didn't have the team and um i actually remember at one point i was i was trying to field out by the out by the boundary and a ball had been hit up in the air and and i tried i got under this ball and i caught it and i thought oh, i just caught it and uh, it bounced out of my hand it went over oh. my shoulder and it plopped onto the floor and rolled over for a four right. and um, and just across the boundary was a friend of mine He's, his dad was standing just across the boundary there's only a few parents watching and i'll always remember what he said to me because he said you stupid boy oh. <laughs> and i was so i was just oh i just i could feel it now i was so gutted because he lost every game and it was just a nightmare and just but, but a few just a few yards down, um, there was a, a teacher who said, "Well done, Robert, like that. Well done, like that." Oh. And I just I was suddenly I was buoyed up. I was able to sort of carry on, and the ball came towards me. I ran towards it, 
threw it back. It's amazing. Just a little bit of encouragement. And I look back at that moment and I think, actually, just how much that, that little bit of encouragement suddenly gave me a second wind. It, it, just, it just gave me that, that ability to sort of try again and keep going. And we so need that. We yeah. so need each other um, to encourage and to affirm each other. Um, it's vital within our Christian lives. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Now, also, <laughs> last, last Sunday's fascinating fact. Yeah. Was that, uh, Jesus was asked 183 questions. Yes. I should yes. have got that from someone else rather than you've counted them. I didn't, no, I didn't that's count good. through painstakingly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we don't quite know whether that's correct or not, but we, we, we'll assume there's lots of questions. But yeah. you said that he di only directly answered three questions yeah that's right yeah. And, uh, well i'm not going to allow you to get away with that ratio of, uh, <laughs> uh, questions but the point you made was that rather than asking why we should be yeah. asking what we are learning through this process in, in, in terms of the kind of questions that we ask you know why is this happening to me uh isn't always the best question to ask is it no, it's not. I mean, it's the, it's the obvious and most immediate question to ask. When, and, and in some ways, it's an emotional response. But, but in truth, actually, we've, we've got to be able to, um, in, the, in, that, in that process, to really see what the Lord is teaching us. What is the Lord showing us in right. this? Um, what are we learning through this? Um, and that's, that's a really important process, too. Um, because God wants us ultimately to mature. And, and, to, and to grow into his likeness. So um, through these situations in life and through, through the things that we encounter, um, we've got to ask the question, you know, how can, how can we use this? How can God use this um, for us to grow through this and, and learn? You won't be able to do that in the moment because in the moment it's like, why has this happened? Yeah. But on reflection um, in time, I think that's something we, we certainly can do. We can look back and say, actually, not so much why, because that keeps us stuck there. Yeah. But what? What can I learn? And what is the Lord teaching me through it? Right. Are, are there any things in particular that you felt God has taught you through barren times or dry times or times when your prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling, if they get that far? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I think actually there's, there, there are times when I just felt um, that, really i just i just needed to just have people come alongside me and just support me in the time that i was in and and, and that that can that can just be a, a one or two friends or or people that are close to you or even family members um but they can help they can help you particularly when there, there are times when you feel that god is just distant he just doesn't feel close to you um but that actually isn't the basis of our faith Otherwise, we're going to be all over the place. The base yeah. of our faith is actually the truth declared in Scripture, that he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, he's always with us. Um, and so we hold on to those truths, even though there are times when, when we might feel otherwise, we might feel uh, pretty dried out, pretty wrung out. Yeah. And, and, and they're difficult lessons to learn, aren't they? Because it's quite often the things that we, we want to tell other people are the exciting things. But often what we learn in those times are some of the most real things, aren't they? In, ter in terms of, uh, kind yeah. of understanding uh, ourselves and understanding what God has done for us. I mean, that, that, that's certainly my reflection looking back. Uh, yeah, I think so. And understanding, uh, understanding the sort of the nature of prayer and, and, and how, how long we pray. I mean, Jesus doesn't really give much in, the t in terms of the directives of prayer. It's only on one occasion that he actually gives a directive about length of prayer, which is in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he says, would you not tarry with me for one hour? But apart from that statement about one hour, um, there isn't really much in terms of the direction of prayer. Um, and so in that respect, we, 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 we struggle somewhat. And um, because we're, we're, we often think that prayer is always going to be victorious. We're always going to feel in the mood for it. We're always going to have that that sort of focus for prayer but actually there are times when it can be very difficult and um and that's that's marked without within the, the sort of scripture time and time again yeah. um prayer is work prayer is actually quite hard to do um and we need to understand that yeah. um and appreciate that it's sometimes it's easy but often it's not um 
and not only that but um in our busy busy lives we i think we can find uh, prayer can easily get squeezed out because we're just not finding the space we're not finding the focus that yeah. we need yeah yeah well, the, the cheeky little contention on length of prayer just occurred to me yeah the lord's prayer yeah when we were encouraged to wash our hands for coronavirus yeah i came across sort of two things that you could quote you could you could either do happy birthday twice because that was a okay 20 seconds or you could recite the lord's prayer which is about okay yeah so yeah with your hour, but jesus seemed to be reasonably happy with 20 seconds while you're washing your yeah. hands <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely um yeah, sometimes you can do you can do those kind of what they call the sort of arrow prayers, those yeah. quick arrow prayers. Nehemiah was good at those. Yeah. Um, those sort of you can see in the, in the beginning of the book of Nehemiah, where he just Nehemiah just does really little quick arrow prayers up to heaven, um, and you can do that too. Um, and, and we we don't we don't need to sort of get um, sort of I don't know browbeaten if you like because we're not sort of spiritual enough or we're not we're not praying hard enough. Yeah. Um, sometimes. It's just a sense of where where we can sort of break through, where we can get that sense of being with God. Yeah. Um, that's all. Yeah. Mm. What, why, why do you think there are times when God appears to be distant? So if we say that his promise is that he will never leave us or forsake us, and, 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 and we'll take that as true, what, why do we have times in our experience when God appears to be distant? Uh, yeah, it seems to be a common experience, doesn't it? Uh, almost regardless of where you are in the Christian journey. Yeah. Uh, it, it appears at times as if God appears to withdraw himself. What, what, how, how would you explain those times? You know, some people might say, well, there's sin and, or, you know, you've, you've disobeyed. But uh, is it more complex than that? Well, yeah, I mean, there's been all kinds of thoughts about this, about the sort of hiddenness and manifestation of, of God within, yeah. within that. Um, and there are times when it, it just seems easier. There are times when the Lord, um, his presence seems to be more manifest. And there are times when almost it seems that God is, is more hidden, is, is actually difficult. And it's interesting where Jesus talks about how we pursue God, where he says, you know, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. Um, there's the, the, we need that sort of active kind of almost active pursuit of God at times. I think there are times when we can grow through and, and sort of deepen our, our relationship with God. And I think it's, it's very often in that sense of, of almost that hiddenness of God rather than the manifestations of God, that we can go into the depths, that we can go into uh, a deeper place with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just thinking about some of the things we've been thinking about Sunday in terms of the growing season. Uh, and it's often in the autumn and the winter that plants and trees do the root stuff. Uh, yeah. They'd be like kind of, uh, you know, the work occurs underneath the surface uh, in order that stuff might eventually appear above the surface, all the things that we enjoy seeing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And it's understanding prayer too, in as much that, you know, sometimes it, it, is, it isn't just about us just talking to God. There are times when we can just be still, yeah. where times when we can be just um, sort of praising him and, and, and just enjoying, enjoying his presence. So it, it doesn't have to be literally just, sort of, oh, I need to give God my list, because that, that, again, isn't really relationship. And that's not about us being drawn in to a relationship with God where we engage with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just you sharing about ask and seek and knock. I think uh, the best way I heard it described once was that it, 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 it literally should be ask and keep on asking, seek and <laughs> keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. Uh, and yeah. our English translation, it just becomes, well, ask. Okay, I've asked. It will happen. Yes. That, that's yes. the same thing which Jesus was saying. It, there, there's a continuation that we, that we carry on asking. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think there is an aspect of that in prayer. Um, I've said before that, um, you know, everything has a breaking point yeah. and, and that comes in prayer too. And we need to learn how to 
how to pray to the breaking point, how to pray to that point where, you know, things can, can get sort of released or, or we can sense that something has actually shifted or moved. I remember being in a prayer meeting where we, we got together, um, there's a sort of group of six of us, we were praying over a situation and, um, and we gathered together and we were quite concerned about the situation. I remember um, we started praying and it was about 15 minutes into that, I just opened my eyes and I just thought, it's done. And, and, and the other people in the room also did the same thing simultaneously, just all opened their eyes and we just looked at each other and we just thought, it's done, you know. And that was only within 15 minutes. But I think that's really important. We have that sense by which we can, it, we, we can pray through situations and into situations until almost until we get that sort of almost release in our times of prayer. Right. And those are really, those, that's a really important kind of lesson in prayer. Yeah. Um, and sometimes things take time. There's going to be a, a, a time before the harder things are actually shifted and the harder things are, are moved as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can pray through scriptures. We can take scriptures or, or things that the Lord has shown us. Um, and we can pray into those or prophecies or anything the Lord has really sort of revealed to us. Yeah. Use that um, as, as a basis for our prayers as well. Um, so all of that seems to come together in the life of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. But we're also conscious, aren't we, that, you know, some people have been praying certain prayers for, for years and years, perhaps for an unsaved husband or wife or son or daughter or a situation. Uh, what would you say to them? Because, you know, when a breakthrough doesn't appear to be coming, uh, but yet they, they, they want to carry on praying because they know that they're praying in God's will. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would be praying, you know, for, for them to, to receive something from the Lord. I think if you're on a journey where, you, you know, and it's been a while, um, to have some kind of encouragement, to have something from the Lord, yeah. um, some kind of word, um, which would often mean um, to continue to pray um, or to pray in a different way or, or to, um, to find a rhythm of prayer in your life whereby it's more sustainable. Um, there have been times when I've really got it wrong and I might, this might sound sort of controversial, but um, I've been praying for something and I just felt the Holy Spirit say, right, I don't really want you to pray for that. Or in fact, you can stop praying for that now. Yeah. Um, so I think it, it's a kind of listening process uh, as well. Um, but we will continue faithfully to pray and we'll, we'll, we'll ask the Lord to speak to us in that and through that. And there are times when he puts the people alongside us to help us, encourage us as well and support us. And there are times when the Lord might just say, actually, it's done. Or actually, I want to release you from that now. Yeah. Um, so that, that's happened to me before. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I also find that one of the things that's really useful is, is, is just for people to come alongside people who are praying these prayers because you can feel quite lonely, can't you? And sometimes yeah. the fact that somebody else prays for your husband or your son or your daughter, it can be real encouragement, can't it? That if you're like, kind of, you're not alone. In yeah, prayers. that's right. But, you know, yeah. God, God brings that encouragement as somebody else prays for them. I, I can remember people saying, thank you ever so much for just praying for whoever mm. uh, and that's one way that we can support people isn't it yeah and we don't often know we can't often see the the immediate effects of our prayers um but you know the the comfort the confidence is that we're being heard you know in heaven that the lord yeah. is alongside us and, and 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 being able to ask of god you know can you will you show me what i'm doing and um and encourage me or or lead me and guide me in this um is all part of the process too right we've, we've got a question ah right okay i see you're not prepared for this one are you oh right no ready no. if i oh, if i say who's asked the question you'll be quaking in your boots oh right okay it's from michael oh michael yep yeah. hello michael <laughs> right here's the question you said that we should persevere in prayer what would you say to those who say you should only pray once for anything more than this means you lack faith? Can you think of any scriptures to support that point of view? That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Jesus often, I mean, Jesus, I mean, in fact, that the, 
the passage that we were looking at um, of, of the friend that comes at midnight, Jesus actually, uh, actually says that, you know, he, he tells this story to encourage people to keep praying and not give up. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a classic example of, of how rather than um, praying in a way which is saying, well, I, I, you know, I'm going to keep sort of badgering God, um, but you, you're not trying to do that. You're trying to, um, you're trying to engage in prayer in such a way that there's, there's going to be a point by which you know that there's been some kind of breakthrough for your prayers. And that's the sense that you have from the Holy Spirit. And we do need to wrestle in prayer and we do need to persevere in prayer. Um, and you've only got to look at how um, David, for example, um, prays and continues to pray. Uh, sorry, Daniel. Um, and in fact, he finds there's a resistance to his prayer, but he continues to persevere in prayer before there's a breakthrough. And then Daniel is actually doing an amazing thing. He's an end time prophet. He's obviously, uh, God is using his prayers, his intercessions to release the people of Israel from exile. This is <laughs> no small prayer. Um, and um, this is no small intercession, but he has to continue to do that before there is breakthrough, sure. even in the spiritual realm. Um, and, you know, um, that, that's, that seems to be sort of the, the experience of many Christians as well. Um, rather than just, oh, I've, I've, I've given the prayer out, therefore it's done. Actually, things don't work out quite that way because um, we, need to find a, we need to find that through our prayers and through our intercessions, um, we can in fact get a greater emphasis of, of faith and, um, and of connection with God uh, for that situation. Yeah. But that's why I think it's quite important, isn't it? That, uh within a church we experience different forms of prayer because quite often public prayer say within a, a sunday service or a big meeting is really expecting yeah. the, the instant result isn't it but often when we're we're praying together in twos or threes or whatever we're often praying about situations where the prayer is continual isn't it and and yeah. we, we we need to learn and see both types of prayer don't we if you like, kind yeah, of prayer I, that's looking for an immediate effect and the prayer that's uh, prepared to, to wait and to hang on in there and to, to look to God to eventually move. Yeah, um, and, and, some, and, and there are some aspects of prayer that do, that do require us to, um, to continue to pray, if yeah. you like. I mean, if you only got to look at the Lord's Prayer and to look at the features of the Lord's Prayer, not only is there a daily prayer, aspect of that with the daily yeah. bread but it's also this ongoing prayer that his will is done on earth as it is in heaven yeah. that's an ongoing prayer um so there is a sense by which that's a, a that's a continuous um appeal to heaven for you know for those situations and situations change and circumstances move on um, and we need to continue to pray for them yeah, yeah. and we may be praying differently than we were before yeah okay wrestling okay wrestling wrestling 19, 1970s wrestling yeah we mentioned a few didn't we well you mentioned a few on sunday yeah i was mean, just i was just saying basically i mean i, I remember <laughs> i remember as a kid watching wrestling in the 1970s and um and I, we would call it wrestling yeah but it was just basically very big people just bouncing off the ropes and smashing into one another and um and we thought i actually remember characters like um big daddy Giant Haystacks, yeah. Mick McManus, you know, these all these guys. Um, athletes, those athletes. Sorry? Those athletes, athletes that's right, them. yes. Um, it didn't appear to be in the greatest of shape. Um, and they would just basically hurl each other against each other and sort of do all these sort of crazy things. And I thought that was wrestling. Until I saw wrestling done in the Olympics. And it was a completely different sport. This was just people totally engaged. In fact, very often there wasn't much movement because they were, they were almost static because there was so much energy and force yeah. holding each other into place until there was actually a breakthrough. Um, and I just thought that's a really interesting picture of prayer mm -hmm. that sometimes, and it's not the whole picture of prayer, but sometimes there are times when we are fully engaged and it becomes almost, it feels almost like a wrestling match. Yeah. 
you know, as, no, as Jacob is wrestling with the man or the angel, if you like, through the night until there's a breakthrough. Um, and I, I think that can be um, very true for prayer. It can feel as if there's a real wrestle going on. Yeah. And that's because prayer is resisted and we need to understand that. I mean, there's, there's very clear within scripture that prayer is resisted. And again, going back to the book of Daniel, it's pretty clear that, that, that the prayers are resisted. Um, and so um, within, within a spiritual warfare context, um, we need to be able to battle through. Yeah. I, yeah. I was just thinking about Jacob uh, wrestling in Genesis chapter 32 today. Yeah. And, uh, I kind of feel that the angel did an illegal move. Oh, right. Yeah, taking his hip out. Yeah. When he took his hip out. So you can just imagine them sort of wrestling for so many hours. Yes. And then the angel sort of kind of does his hip move. Yeah. And, and dislocates Jacob's hip, doesn't he? And yeah. I just have it, whether that's legal or not, I'll, I'll sort of leave that to the purists. But what occurred to me was that really after that, Jacob couldn't wrestle. Yeah. If you like, uh, you know, the squat position, which is what you kind of associate with wrestlers, <laughs> uh, he wouldn't have been able to do that. And you almost get yeah. tipped of the only thing he could do. And, and, and again, for me, when I say it, there's almost some comedic value in it. He's just hanging on to the guy's feet. And you can almost imagine yeah. the angel sort of saying, that's enough, we've finished. And Jacob just hanging on because that's all he can do. He's got no strength left. Yeah. Everything he's achieved before, he's achieved through strength and scheming and his own devices. Yeah. He's just hanging on and saying, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless yeah. me. And, and, and sometimes yeah. I think God brings us to that position, doesn't he, where uh, we, we're brought low. And, yeah. you know, kind of, if he moves, it's solely because of him. You know, kind of, I've exhausted all my devices and, you know, my strength and everything. Uh, and I'm just totally dependent on God. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, the interesting thing is that, that um, Jacob is greatly blessed through that wrestling match. Yeah, he says, yeah. You know, his name is changed to yeah. Israel. And, um, and that God does bless him and God does if you like, he wins the inheritance, but it comes through a struggle. Yes. It doesn't come automatically. Um, and the angel could have touched his hip right at the very beginning, but he doesn't, he does it at the end. Yeah. Um, and almost, if you like, he, he kind of welcomes, he brings that, invites that, that wrestling out of, of Jacob. Um, because there was something in Jacob that really needed to do that, that really needed to contend almost with God. Yeah. Um, until, he, until, if you like, he gets to that point where, he just is able just to yield to God entirely. Yeah. Um, and, and, and he receives from the Lord what he's been looking for, which is the blessing that he was sought, that he sought. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great um, moment in, in the life of Jacob. Yeah. One more question. Oh, right. Okay. Very wise woman. It seems somebody called Catherine Williams. Oh, right. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> Is it important to be expectant as we pray? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, sometimes we can, we can pray even with declaration. And um, especially when you've got the, when, when the, 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 the Lord's will is revealed in that. Um, but I, I think so. I think it's good to sometimes even declare for our prayers rather than they become sort of just requests declarations are, are important too um, but expectation in prayer um, is important not all prayer is 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 request if you like mm -hmm. I mean sometimes prayer is is just telling God what's on our heart just yeah. sharing with him how we feel and talking with him I think that's a very important aspect of prayer it's a, a relational time if you like um, and I think that's important too um, I always remember um, they asked um, Mother Teresa, um, you know, what do you, what do you say when you pray? And she said, I don't. And she says, and <laughs> she said, I don't, I just listen. And, um, and then they said, well, what does God say to you then when you're listening? And she says, he doesn't, he just listens. In other words, there's this moment where they're just, nothing's being said, yeah. but her prayer life has got so advanced that there's just this knowing, 
this time which you can just rest in the presence of God. And it's moved beyond just um, uh, a list of things that we're praying for into something that's much more relational. Yeah. You know. Good. Well, as I said, we basically knew things would start to nosedive when I mentioned wrestling. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's probably the time to, to finish, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Not, have you got a word of encouragement for people who are perhaps struggling with prayer at this moment without preaching your Sunday sermon again? But, uh, <laughs> sort of a, a short word of encouragement. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, in, in as much that the, the story that Jesus gave about the friend at midnight was to say, look, you know, you can, you can get what you want sometimes from people by just nagging them yeah. and just by being persistent and not giving up and, um, and, you know, and being bold enough just to go out there and ask. And if you can believe that you can get something just by being persistent and by just going out there and ask, then why can't we believe that we can receive from our loving Heavenly Father whose delight it is to hear our prayers and to answer them. Yeah. That's a lovely thing to finish on, isn't it? It, it, It's about the character of God and the goodness of God and the fact that, as you said on Sunday, uh, the first two words he encouraged us to pray were, our Father. Yeah, that's right. To pray together, yeah. Good. Mm. Well, we won't attempt to say the Lord's Prayer together. uh, (laughs) That could be messy. That could be messy, yeah. (laughs) I know you like to have it written down in front of you, just in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, shall we quit while we're ahead? I think so. I think yeah. that'll be wise, yeah. Good. Well, yeah. thank you ever so much for what you've shared and uh, looking forward to what you're going to be sharing on Sunday and the opportunity to catch up with you next week. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Great so, to chat with you. Care, yeah. See Take you care, then. Bye. Bye.